But before we uh, uh, get into the third strategy that we're going to talk about, I just wanted to, as, as Maura, as you were talking, I, I, I uh, was worried that another uh, rumor that would get out there is that we're giving opportunity a bad rap. And I just want to say that uh, if we take a few steps back and look at this survey experiment, we, we tried with opportunity a lot. Uh, so the very first graph, I, so we, we were interested in at least three different versions of opportunity uh, because this is a value that we, we do give it a chance in almost every issue that we work on. So the first uh, graph that you saw uh, was interested in this concept of opportunity for all. And by the time we got to this survey experiment, you can see that we tried two other versions of opportunities. So one, that communities need opportunities, and two, that homes specifically provide opportunities for people. And while these two versions of opportunity, they didn't tank, they didn't depress support, we saw that there were just other values that were a little bit, well, not a, a lot of it, uh, more effective. So that's one thing. We tried with opportunity, and we'll continue to try. But for now, this is where we are, talking about fairness and interdependence. The second thing I, I wanted to add um, is that the last time we were here a year ago, uh, we, we did talk about interdependence as a value a little bit. but. Uh, you might notice, and as you look at our reports, and as you look at the, uh, the, the report that's even in your folders, it talks about a specific flavor of interdependence, of regional interdependence. And one of the things that's changed between last year and this year is that we've been looking at, at different versions of interdependence in the same way that we are interested in different versions of opportunity. And I think the fact that we found that we can uh, get the types of effects we want to see when we make the point that as regions or as kind of specific geographic communities, we are in this together and what happens for uh, some of our community members affects other community members. A is an interesting finding and B, I think again, fits into the larger point and the larger messaging strategy that we see uh, in use here with Home for All. And so uh, I think that's a particularly interesting kind of nuance or update to the, to the research that we've been doing. All right, so what is the third strategy that we want to talk about today? So in a way, you can think about this third strategy as a, as a continuation of the place we started in, in, in making this shift to saying that we want to make more homes available. And one of the pieces of talking about availability that we really worked on is how to uh, encourage communicators to uh, not just present solutions, but say that the solutions they want to put into place or, uh, or even uh, the way that decisions around housing get made now have something to do with availability. So we are encouraging communicators to make this link between uh, making homes available and policies that we have in place now or policies that we might want to put into place in the future. So to give you an example of what this looks like, we broke down uh, an example of the type of uh, statement or the type of communication that we might test. So this is a, an explanation of policy that's got four main points. So uh, one of the things we are interested in is can we build an explanation that helps people understand that uh, uh, current policies around uh, housing might advantage some and might disadvantage others. And so this is the, the policy statement that we tested out that makes the case that not everyone is benefiting from current policy. And so what I think is interesting and, and special about this is that this really takes the time to kind of explain how uh, policy is involved in people's everyday lives. And this ultimately ends with the idea uh, that we need to make sure that our resources uh, for making homes that uh, homes available are available to everyone. And so uh, one of the things that we're interested in and one of the things that we'll uh, talk about a little later today and that you'll see in some of our reports is that we take the time to uh, uh, build out these explanations that talk about how policies either make homes available, 
don't make homes available or uh, uh, support everyone in our communities. And another thing that you'll see in this report as you continue to look through it uh, is that we, and we found that it's very uh, useful to give specific examples of the types of policies that we want to put into place, uh, which is something that you have definitely heard us talk about before. So um, if we, So a four-step kind of policy point uh, explanation like this is something that we would put into uh, the good old-fashioned survey experiments that we like to talk about. Um, and in this case, we were uh, specifically uh, testing this, the type of policy that you saw on the last slide. And one of the thi and the thing that we see is that again, we get the kinds of uh, boosts and support that we want to see. So when we uh, build out explanations that either uh, talk about how policy is making homes available or how current policy is not making homes available, either of those types of explanations, we're able to see that participants uh, see housing as an important issue, see housing as a collective issue, uh, support making more homes available, and support making homes available in their own communities. And uh, making sure that we can see all four of these types of batteries is something that was a large part of the work that we've been doing. And so all of this kind of gets us to uh, the fourth strategy that I think is uh, a fun one to talk about. So we could have actually started today's presentation uh, thinking about the tone that we use. And, and a tone, tone uh, you know, is one of the frame elements that we're interested in testing across a lot of the work that we do. But the reason I say we could have uh, started our presentation here today um, is that you might have noticed over your time of working with us is that we don't like uh, crisis framing. We are trying to get away from uh, focusing on uh, crisis or fatalism or the idea that there isn't anything we can do to solve uh, large problems. We are always looking for frames that shift uh, thinking to a more um, a, a, a tone that we think is more productive. So shift thinking into talking about what we can do, steps that we can take, and so a positive tone uh, is is a piece of that. So we could have started our presentation with that today, but we just didn't. It's number four instead. So uh, a positive tone, or, or the work that we did in this project, looking at different, uh, different tones, was really about striking this balance between uh, urgency and efficacy. And there's, there's a larger reason why we're always interested in building uh, frames that help us do this. But uh, this interest in urgency and efficacy comes from a larger body of research that's all about persuasion. Essentially, how do you get people to do things that are important? How do you get people to do what you want them to do? And so uh, one of the, the concepts that comes out of that work is trying to get this balance between urgency and efficacy. So if we uh, think about urgency as how intense a problem is, that's one thing. And if we think about efficacy as communicating the idea that there's something you can do, you want to strike a balance between those things. So we could think about uh, uh, messaging that's saying, you know, this isn't a big deal, and there aren't really steps we can take. If we think about that as a baseline, well, what are the other types of messaging that are possible? So if we say, this is a huge problem, and there's not really a lot that you can do about it, one of the risks there is that uh, folks will feel kind of fatalistic and get the sense that they're, you know, why try? Because you've just told me that there isn't anything that I can do. And that's not particularly great. We could also say this isn't that serious of a problem, but there are a lot of steps that we can take. Well, that's not that great either. I suppose it's not as bad as fatalism, but it's still not uh, the level of motivation that we're really hoping for. But if we can uh, strike this balance between uh, urgency and efficacy and say this is a problem and here are some steps we can take. There are things that we can do about this. Uh, the person who designed these graphics for me calls this magic and uses this little Fantasia 
uh, emoti the, what do you call that, emoji thing? Yeah, that. Um, and so all of that is to say that being able to say, yes, we have a problem. So we're not sweeping problems under the rug. We're saying, yes, we have a problem. But there are specific next steps that we can take. We're trying to make specific changes. We're advocating uh, to, to change some of the ways that we do business in this area. Uh, that balance is really what we are all about. And we think that uh, uh, being thinking about tone is one of the ways that we can start to get this balance between uh, urgency and efficacy. And so we always say that tone matters. So in uh, the, the work that we did, uh, one of the ways that we refer to this um, in our reports is uh, uh, different valences of a message. So we can have a message that uh, has a positive valence or talks about what we will accomplish, the good we'll do for our communities, the potential that different solutions have, the things that we will gain if we put uh, particular policies or solutions into place. That's the positive valence. Uh, we compare that to talking about what we'll lose if we don't do something, what happens if we fail to act, what are the negative consequences that will uh, that are possible for us, that's a negative valence. We compared these two types of messaging with each other uh, in the work that we did. And so what we see uh, is that when we focus on what we'll get in our communities, the gains that we'll see, uh, the, the, the possibility, what solutions can do, uh, we got better findings than A, if we, uh, presented people with no message at all, or B, uh, presented people with a message that was about what we'll lose, the bad things that will happen. Uh, so we see that we get better findings when we, excuse me, uh, choose a tone that is about what's positive, what we'll gain, what will happen, why we want to put these solutions into place. And so um, one of the things that's interesting about this tone finding is that it fits right in with the other recommendations that we have been talking about uh, over the course of the morning today. So we started talking about the fact that we are going to take action. We're going to make more homes available. The values finding that we talked about was all about making the case that this is something that's good for our communities, that this is the right thing to do. That fits in with this idea of a positive tone or this positive valence. And we just talked about the fact that we want to be able to point to specific solutions. And now we're saying that we want to do all of that and make sure we're focusing on talking about what we can do, what is possible. And so these kind of four strategies that we've worked to all fit together. But the main reason that we thought it was important to spend some time and really test different valences of messages is that ultimately we want to get away from this uh, crisis and, and fatalistic kind of backfire effect. And if there's anything that comes out of the you don't have to live here uh, report and work is that we know that uh, a frame that is only about this is a huge problem, this is an outsized problem, this is a, a tsunami of catastrophe that's about to wash over us, that is all about urgency, but it's not about that efficacy, the idea that there's something we can do and that we are ultimately looking for frames that, that have both that really are able to strike this balance between yes, we have a problem, but there are solutions that we can put into place and here's how we're going to do that. So we've talked about four strategies. Now I wanna kind of preview the frame game that we're going to play a little bit later and kind of invite you into uh, the way our colleagues kind of think about messages. So we are gonna play a little game here together that I like to call rate this message, yeah. <laughs> Woo. All right, so when you want to rate a message, the first, the, it, what it's really all about is taking a look at a piece of communications and saying, is there anything in here? Are there any words, any phrases, examples, uh, images, data? Is there anything in here that reminds me of some of those themes that I want to avoid? like? crisis, or this is an individual problem, or there's nothing we can do. And if there is anything, words, phrases, images in a message that cues up some of those things I want to avoid, then 
the message is a no, I don't like it. But if it successfully avoids some of those themes, I'd say the message is a go. It's something that I do like. So let's, let's try and put this into practice and maybe rate this message and think about how we feel about it. So what we've got in front of us, I can recall the days when a teacher could own their own home here in Palo Alto or in a nearby community. I know we can't turn back the clock but I'm convinced that there are solutions to this problem. So my question for you in this rate this message game, is there any language in here that reminds you or cues up some of the things we want to avoid? So does, is there anything in here that cues up crisis, there's nothing we can do, or this is a personal problem? So, uh, We'll do this by a raise of hands. So raise your hand if you would read this and, and come away with this thinking there's nothing we can do to solve this problem. Okay, so we've got a few uh, people pointing to some language in here that might be queuing that up. And I can understand why, because there are some language cues in here that might get at that idea. So uh, we've got someone actually saying, uh, uh, that we can't turn back the clock, so that's you know a little bit negative. But I would also say that we do have someone saying that there are solutions that we can put into place uh, to address this problem. So this is a little bit of a trick question because it's a message that strikes a balance between some of the themes that we want to avoid and some of the themes that we want to advance. And let me tell you, I did this on purpose to make the broader point that most of the time, messages or pieces of communication that we're going to be looking at, in fact, have a mix of both. They oftentimes have, uh, it's possible to have strategies that we know we want to avoid and to have some strategies that aren't so bad. And I say this to you uh, because this is, you know, one way to think about this is this is the magic of framing or, or trying to uh, review messages. Is that sometimes it's, sometimes it's about making uh, small and kind of subtle tweaks to messages as opposed to totally uh, scrapping them and, and never thinking about them again. Uh, so kind of refining messages and, and shifting our frame is oftentimes about making uh, small choices. So let's take a look at another uh, example of this same game. So here's what we've got. And so California families continue to face a very real housing crisis. The state leaders, meanwhile, are not helping. It's the cruelest irony. We have a housing crisis, and California's leaders are not addressing it. They're merely professing to help with costly policy gimmicks that are no substitute for freeing the market to align supply with demand. All right. We're, we don't even have to guess with this one. <laughs> there are, but, but uh, the, the task here is to really think about, uh, so I hear you laughing, but to really think about what is it that's making me laugh? Why, why is that funny, right? And so what I want you to do is really think about what language, what phrases, where in this uh, small paragraph do we see language that's causing this reaction? Now, we, there's, there's a lot of language in here. So we're talking about, uh, uh, I think, um, uh, this second half that's talking about what California's leaders are or are not doing, that conversation kind of gets to uh, a larger pattern that, that we see and a pattern that we talked about uh, a year ago when we were here, uh, that we see members of the public kind of questioning what it is that government can do. They believe that solutions are possible, but they're not quite sure uh, what our, our uh, our state and local government can do sometimes. And so we can see language in here that's really feeding into that assumption. But, but the, my message here is this. When we are presented with messages and we want to think about, do I need to refine this or is this going to be okay? It's about calling attention to the words and phrases, the examples, the images that are connecting to um, connecting to some of the uh, assumptions that we know are possible. 
So we are a tiny bit ahead of schedule, but if it's okay, I'm gonna suggest that we take our break now, and then when we come back, we can uh, pick up with this theme of playing a framing game and really dig into uh, looking at different examples of communications and thinking about how we might uh, edit them. Thank you. <clears throat> Wonderful, we have a little bit of time. Uh, thank you, both of you. So I, it's about a quarter to 10. Let's be back in your seats at five minutes to 10 and we'll keep a little bit ahead of the game here. So have a good break. <laughs>